I recently watched a podcast by the neuroscientist Andrew Huberman. It was on the topic of learning new skills. The podcast outlined the most up-to-date science on the most effective way to acquire a new skill. Some of the points made in the podcast were pretty obvious, but some of the points were very shocking and contrary to what we've all been told before. So in this video, I'm gonna discuss the most useful information. I'm also gonna show you what happened when I put this to the test. And at the end, I'm gonna give you a protocol on how you can use it in your own practice. So the first point I'm gonna make here is quite an obvious one. It's that you need to be 100% focused whilst practicing to maximize the gains from that practice session. The good news here is that 10 minutes of fully focused practice is better than two hours of less focused practice. So quality practice over quantity practice. The next point again is probably something you already know. Repetition is key. This is another obvious point. Whatever you're trying to practice, you need to get in as many repetitions as possible. What's not obvious though, is that these repetitions do not need to be correct every time. In fact, it's required that you make mistakes. Without making these mistakes, the brain will learn at a much slower rate. So every time you make a mistake, you are one step closer to mastery. This brings me to the first real shocking discovery. Practicing slowly is counterproductive. This is one that really caught me off guard, as I've always advised my students to practice slowly, and I've tried to do so myself. So there are two reasons why practicing slowly is not that great. One, you won't get in as many repetitions. So like we've already discussed, repetitions are absolutely key to maximizing your practice time. And two, you won't make as many mistakes when you practice slowly. So like we've discussed, mistakes are really integral to the learning process. So one small caveat here is they found that practicing slowly can be useful but only when you're very close to mastering the skill. Most of the time, you should be practicing at a more challenging speed. And this is actually really great news because nobody likes practicing slowly, so you don't have to do it. And here's another shocking technique to do absolutely nothing. Once you get to the end of your practice, before moving on to the next thing in life, spend between one and 10 minutes doing absolutely nothing. Apparently the brain plays back the practice session at 20 times the speed. So there is still learning to be done after you've put the effort in. The final point I'd like to make today is the use of metronomes. There are a few people that say do not use a metronome, but most people advocate the use of a metronome, believing it's to improve timing. But apparently that's not why it's useful. According to the science, metronomes are useful to intermediate and advanced players to help create a rhythm to your practice, which in turn helps generate more repetitions and more errors. It also gives the brain an external focus, which helps to accelerate brain plasticity. And it was reported that they actually don't know why this is, but it works. I encourage you to listen to the podcast in full. If you're still skeptical, then he does provide links to the studies. I actually wanted to test this myself though, so I came up with an experiment. I picked two seven note scales that I've never tried to play. I will attempt to learn them both. The first I will practice how I usually do, and the second I will practice using a new protocol that I've put together from this podcast. I'll tell you at the end of this video what that protocol is, so stay tuned for that. Okay, so I'm trying to learn the Besantine scale here, also known as the double harmonic minor. So my previous ideal practice would be at slow speeds, no metronome, no breaks. To get it to this point, it took me this amount of time. Next, I tried to learn the Persian scale, also known as the chromatic hyperlydian inverse. How about that for a name? I employed all the same techniques. I was able to extrapolate from the podcast and altogether, it took me this amount of time. So these new practice techniques took a bit of getting used to, but I found that I still completed the task two minutes quicker. And I found the second scale a lot more awkward to play. But despite that, I was still quicker. So based on these not very scientific experiments, there might be something to this. So if you'd like to give this a try, here's what I did. 
One, set a metronome to around 85 BPM. That way you can comfortably play quarter notes, eighth notes and sixteenth notes. Commit to a focused practice where every second is dedicated to creating more repetitions. Take random rests of about 10 seconds. Upon further research, I found that you can actually take micro rests of about 10 seconds at random points in the practice. And this has a similar effect as taking a rest at the end. So when I found my focus wavering a little, I'd just close my eyes and take a rest for 10 seconds and then continue. Remember that mistakes are an essential part of the process, so don't be worried to make them. Don't play it slowly until you are very close to mastering the skill. At the end, take a one to 10 minute rest. If you're interested in trying this, give it a go and leave me a comment, let me know how it went. Thanks for watching.